Well, hello there and welcome back. This is the replay from this week's training uh, where we're going to be discussing some staging uh, with Photoshop and how to basically remove or change out textures as well as paint colors. This episode is brought to you by the staging course that we have for Photoshop that is located inside of the Academy. I'm going to leave a link below for you to click and sign up for that. You can get started for free. All right, let's go ahead and get started today on this demo. So really quickly, let me show you what it was that we built um, during the live training. And then I'm gonna show you just about 10 minutes of how to do one of these so that you can still get the same information. A lot of this was repetitive work, but um, you know, repetition is key to learning. So um, I would definitely suggest you try this on your own as you're learning here, okay? so. We're gonna dive in and just do this island right now. Um, so the first thing I like to do, I have about three stages here. The first stage is to create a smart object, okay? So first I'm gonna create a layer. I'm then going to add a um, just a color. I'm gonna put a color on that layer in that selection. We can reduce the opacity so we can see through it and kind of start seeing what we're doing. Um, and then we'll just rename this really quick. We'll call this smart object for the countertop or or something like that, whatever reminds you. Um, during the session, we talked a lot about how staying organized is really key when you're doing this kind of work. Um, next, you go ahead and create a smart object by right clicking on the layer. And if you double click into the smart object, you can see, you know, this is where you would put the textures. So this is a really great workflow because you can easily swap out the textures. All you need to do once you have a texture, as you can see here, we increase the opacity in the smart object so that when we save that it updates in the actual file so the same thing will happen once we add a texture we just like to do this color pass first just to to make sure everything's working next we'll go ahead and distort the image by hitting Control t right or right clicking and going to distort and that'll really quickly allow us to go from corner to corner and get this thing lined up and again, the beautiful thing is, is now we can just add flat textures inside of the, the um, smart object. We can just add a flat texture. We can swap it out because, you know, clients, they always want to try different things. Um, and we don't want to continually put textures into perspective because it's a waste of time when we can just use this smart object. All right. So we'll put the smart object in perspective and then we can easily swap out the textures um, as needed. And I'll show you show you that trick here in a second but first let's go ahead and mask out this basket now this basket is part of the original image so we can't just remove it but we will need to select the original image and I'm going to use a, um, a selection tool which I really like called object select and uh, we're gonna try to select this basket sometimes it takes a minute to start to read it and then we'll create a mask so that the basket no longer um, affects or sits behind our smart, our smart object. Now to some of you, this might be a very advanced stuff and that's okay because inside the Academy, we have very step-by-step -step basics in Photoshop that'll get you up and running. Um, these live sessions are just kind of meant to show you what can be done. Um, and then we're gonna walk step-by-step -step through it much slower uh, in, in, the, in the future course coming up, as well as some of the courses we've had in the past, like Photoshop Launch, Design Board Bootcamp. Um, but the staging course coming up is going to be a lot of fun, too, because we're going to do a lot of these kind of things. So you can see we just created a mask with that selection. And now we can just, again, increase the opacity. Here, we're going to add the texture in so that we can... Um, will update the actual texture, right? So no more purple, pinkish block. We're gonna actually drop the texture in and uh, generally you just need to drag it on here. I'm working off of a PC in this example. Sometimes between Mac and PC, dragging and dropping into the file can be a little bit different. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is hit Command or Control T and then I can scale it up up here uh, at the top by dragging on the H or the W. I'm just gonna align the texture to 
you know, just suit my interests here. Maybe try to have as few giant lines as possible. And then all I need to do is hit uh, Control S um, or come down here to, whoops, File, Save in the Smart Object, and you can see it update in our master file here. Um, we do a lot of this in Design Board Bootcamp, so you would be building an entire room from scratch. We, we wouldn't be working with pictures. We build the entire room from scratch using Smart Objects. So lots of uh, very good techniques in Design Board Bootcamp. If you want to check that out, Again, I'll put links for that below. Now, the next phase, once we have our, our smart object made, our texture added, the next phase is, is lighting or reflections, okay? So I kind of put those two worlds together because they're both fine tuning, uh, fine, a category of fine tuning, I find. Um, so we'll, what we're doing here is we're just selecting the background with the marquee tool and then hitting Control or Command J on top of the original image. That'll put the selection on its own layer. And then we flip it. And then a really important technique that I want you to remember is when we go to um, put this new layer on top of our smart object in order to create the reflection, after we flip it, we need to then adhere it to the layer underneath it. Um, and let me show you what I mean here. If I just hold Alt, I can click, and you'll see that the upper layer will now adhere to the, um, the alignment of the lower layer, or stick to it. Okay, there you go. So now the reflection just sticks to the uh, area we want it to, and then we can adjust its strength, how reflective it is, just by adjusting the opacity. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, we could keep it really crisp or we could add a small blur to the, uh, to the reflection to maybe give it a little bit more realism. It all depends on the surface you're working with. As we know, marble is very reflective, so we probably want to keep it pretty sharp. Um, so there we go. Next, let's go ahead and add the reflection for the basket because anything sitting on a marble surface is going to have some sort of reflection. Um, so we'll select it using the mask that we created in the first steps of masking out the basket. And if you just hit Control or Command and click on that mask, you'll recreate the selection. So we'll go to the original image because that's where that basket lives. And we will create a new layer that, um, that is just the basket alone. And that'll allow us to then flip it upside down and make the reflection. Very similar to the step we just did where we selected the background and flipped that and added that to the countertop. Again, this is very fast. We're moving here. Um, I just want to show you guys the, the general workflow. Um, we're going to slow this down a lot in the upcoming course for uh, staging with Photoshop. And you guys can sign up for that right now for totally for free just to be informed when it's ready. Um, and again, I'll leave a link for that below. Okay, so once we flip that over again, um, rem remember you have to adhere it to the countertop itself uh, so that it doesn't bleed over into the lower part of the island. We just want it to sit on that countertop. So always hold Alt and hover between the reflection layer and the bottom layer. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Um, now there's one more step here with this countertop. We wanna make sure that we give it the depth it needs. Uh, so I'm gonna make a new selection that we're gonna be treating a little bit differently here on the side, the profile part of the, the countertop. And just gonna make sure I have my edges right here. And we're not necessarily gonna make a smart object here because the the surface we're working with is not into perspective, right? It's not going back into space. So it's just a flat texture. So we don't need to create a smart object because it's easy enough to do it here in the master um, file. So this one will turn green. We're still gonna make that color just as a step one so we can see what we're doing. I'm gonna take that texture now and add it to, um, to that color. 
Okay, so then I can adjust the texture. I can align it exactly where I want to. And again, we're using that arrow technique where we hold Alt and hover between the layers and adhere the top layer to the bottom layer. Okay, that's a really important one um, that I use all the time. And you will too if you start doing this kind of work. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this wall now. I just want to show you how to change a paint color. Um, the backsplash, we a lot of the same techniques were used, um, so I didn't want to recover that. But over here, we're going to just change a paint color. So I'm going to use the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, to select that wall that I want to create like an accent wall with. Um, so we'll just select it up. And if you ever want to add to your selection, you're going to hold shift and then I'll add a plus sign. Or um, if you ever want to remove from it, you hold alt and that will um, that will remove from your selection. But if you wanted to add to the selection, hold shift. Right now I'm adding to the sh to the selection, so I'm holding shift to make sure I get that edge in there uh, and don't lose it. Now I want to subtract, so I'm going to hold alt and that will allow me to subtract this looks like a light switch because I want to keep that white and original. Okay, I'll go to the original layer and with that selection made I can create a new layer. Again, we'll pick a different color and let's just color this one red. Now what that does is it really just it gives us a base. It doesn't necessarily have to be red. I'll show you how to change this color in the future. We're just establishing our, our base and making sure that we're getting to a point where we can change the color as needed as the client requests. All right, so now with that layer set, I can now just adjust it. I'd like to use these adjustment layers, um, which will help me kind of blend it into the, the original image. I don't want to just leave it as it is because of, as a flat color because it won't bring it won't um, it won't reflect any of the the original lighting that was on that wall. Okay, so now we can adjust the opacity, which might change the color slightly. It's an easy way to do it, especially on a white wall. Um, if, it, if this was already a colored wall or a wall that had uh, a wallpaper on it, you probably couldn't do it this way. You'd have to use an adjustment layer like hue and saturation or balance. Um, now all we just need to do is add a reflection. As you can see in the original image, there was a reflection of the white. Um, the white color so we need to do the same thing with our new color okay so again I just selected it I've duplicated the layer and now I'm flipping it I'm creating a mask here uh, and a mask allows us to to again remove easily from the original and using a gradient tool we can we can decide how much of that original we want to keep Again, if you paint black into the mask, you're going to remove. If you paint white into the mask, you add. And again, we're going to go through each one of these tools step by step um, in the upcoming course where we're going to talk about masking. It's going to be like its own lesson, right? So you'll be able to quickly understand what that is, how to use these tools. Again, I know I'm going quickly here. I'm using hotkeys. I'm doing a lot of things that you may not be able to see on the surface here. Um, but uh, as you get better at this and as you learn these tools and the hotkeys, you get really fast at, at designing these rooms. So it might feel a lot here, like a lot here in the beginning. Um, but as we learn together, you're going to get really fast at this and be able to turn these around quickly for your clients. Okay, so now I'm just creating another layer that I'm putting on top of my base, right? Once that's above the base, I can I can I can basically change the color out very easily. Um, you can see that I've given it now a flat color, but I want to change this to uh, to again accept the shadows and the light that was on the original image. Um, so I like to use the color adjustment mode. Now, if I wanted to adjust this color some more, we could use color balance. And again, see, this is what happens when you don't adhere it to the lower layers. It will affect the entire image. But 
once we hold alt hover between the layers now we can just affect that that part of the wall that we want to affect all right so well that's it for this replay um hopefully you guys can join me in the next uh, next week's lesson where you can ask questions. Um, I love to have people who are live. Um, otherwise, please sign up for the waiting list for the upcoming course that was going to walk you through staging with Photoshop step by step, specifically for interior design. So please do that and I'll see you next time. If you're using software, you're going to have questions along the way. Join the Design Tribe. It's a free supportive community that brings together designers from all over the world who are dedicated to mastering interior design. I'll leave a link below, so come on over and say hi.